Hey, hello, whoever's there. <coughs> Having a fireside chat. Come on in, say hello. Hello, welcome in. Hanging out around the fire tonight.
This is a good fire. It's a real good fire tonight. Welcome to the fire. Come in and say hi.
whatever. Hi Ron, how's it going? Good to see you buddy. It's supposed to get down to 28 degrees here tonight so I'm running the fire. Good night for it. Yeah, it's going to be the coldest it's been in like a decade. I spent a good part of the day running around securing plants. Covering over tropicals. Basically doing anything I can to not have what I had happen last year where I got a unexpected freeze. But there's still going to be plenty of damage. There's lots of stuff I can't cover. Oh yeah, it's a good hot fire, so I'm doing pretty good. Oh. Uh. Yeah, this type of temperature does truly wreck havoc, but that's okay, because you kind of need it every few years to basically knock down the Florida overgrowth that just kind of pushes its way in on the area. So, you know, it's a catch-22. Tropicals, they'll get burned if you don't protect them, 
even a lot of the native plants will get burned because they're not used to it. But on the other hand, if I'm lucky, it'll kill some of this overgrowth off and I'll have lots and lots of compost out of it. And I get biochar out of the process for tonight. Running this fire. I'm probably going to run it tomorrow night too. Getting conflicting reports on what tomorrow night is supposed to be. Some are saying mid-30s and then there's a couple reports that are saying that tomorrow night's supposed to be colder than tonight. So, you know how the weatherman is. How are things going your way, Ron? Is it cold? I know the eastern side of the U.S. is getting hit pretty hard with the cold. That's why this is here. But I haven't seen anything about out your way. Uh, you're in the same zone as I am, I think. You're 9B, right? But I think you guys get colder than we do. Or at least a longer cold than we get. Oh, you're only been down to the 40s. Uh, you know, we've had... A nice cool off at the beginning of this year, which was a nice reprieve from the normal, it's hot. But at the same time, we've been 70s and low 80s for weeks with some quick drop offs just for a night. Yeah, we had uh, high 30s last week, but the winds were just incredibly high so there really wasn't much to contend with with frost we only got a little bit on one morning this amount of cold is actually a little early for us we generally don't get our coldest week of the year until the first second week of February so getting this kind of cold the last week in January is a little abnormal, but not so much so that I didn't already have things set up and conveniently going so that I can just run around and do what I did today. I turned the table into a greenhouse and wrapped a few, uh, shelving units with plastic so they're the little greenhouses now and moved a bunch of my plants up onto my porch where it won't get as cold although I am worried about a few of the uh, tropicals that are there I do have a couple fully tropical trees by a couple I mean you know 30 or so but they should be good up on the porch Yeah, I'm going to have to do a little bit more, get a little bit better game plan for the prepping, though. I found a lot of the sheets that I used to use for doing this are just not in serviceable condition anymore. So I'm going to have to go secondhand store shopping and get me a few more sheets. And some clothespins. Can't seem to find clothespins anymore. You should just close pin them on. I don't have any clothes pins. Uh, how's your gardens going? You get anything in new?
Yeah, I'm kind of odd man out. I still like using a clothesline. I don't have a clothesline. I just uh, hang them up on the kids' uh, play place for more than enough space for a load at a time for myself. I don't really like using the dryer. It seems like a waste of energy to me. Ah. Well, when you got the time, Ron, do what you can. You know, sometimes you just can't get in there and do what you want to do because of work. I've had a lot of that lately. I know a lot of people that aren't really getting some of the stuff they want done because of other things. This whole COVID situation is kind of screwed over a lot of people pretty good. Give me a second, I gotta kind of poke at the fire. This fire is a mix of pigeon pea from the yard that had died off already and oak sourced from the side of the road because everybody cuts down their trees here and stacks them up nice and neatly. Ah, Ron, I got you some seeds set aside. As soon as I get a chance, I'll be sending you some seeds. I've got pigeon peas. Hi, Carpy Chris. Nice seeing you. I've got some velvet beans. If I can get them out of the ground, I've got some African potato mint to send you. And there's something else I set aside specifically for you. I just got to find a box. Yeah, they stack up oak and pine and all kinds of stuff. I really like getting the oak. But I'll burn the pine too. Carpet Chris, thank you very much. It is a very, very comfortable fire. I actually need to go grab me another piece and add it on. I'll be right back. There we go, that should carry for a while. <clears throat> Man, I wish I had a wood stove. I don't have anywhere to put it. <clears throat> the main point of this fire is basically to help keep the frost out of this immediate area. Now, 
used to do this back in the 80s when you'd have in 70s when it'd be nice and cold like this the uh, citrus farmers would light fires down the roads there'd be hundreds of fires just like this out in those citrus groves it'd make a huge difference nowadays they just turn on the sprinklers and freeze everything and they and then complain that it got damaged Yeah, Carpet Chris, I love wood stoves. A buddy of mine had one. We used to use it all the time. Never had one of my own. I do have a wood oven, though. Although, I mostly use it as a grill. And right now, I don't have a smoker. Gonna have to do something about that. I'll probably just make another one. This is a good fire. If I lose you, uh, I am running low on data. And I figured I'd just burn up my data. I got to re-up tomorrow anyway. So <coughs> if I'm suddenly gone, I either ran out of battery or data. But I think my battery was good. Oh, well, I guess my battery is not that good. It's at 40%. But, uh, I've been doing quite a few. Uh, when you get a camper van, you'll get a wood stove. And you got to make a video of that. I've never seen a wood stove in a camper van. That would be cool. I've been doing fishing streams because it's that time of year here. Best fishing down here is during the winter. Wanted to go do that tonight, but that wasn't really possible. Well, Ron, I figured out that I could do three to four live streams on my phone per month on my present plan and that would run out my data either completely or real close and uh, I have a hard time live streaming at the house the My internet really, really is not good, and I have a lot of issues trying to live stream. More often than not, I can't even get on. Grumpy Chris, I'm going to have to look that up. I have never seen that. Now you done gave me something to go look at. Never even thought of that. I was always taught not to have an open flame on boats and RVs because they burn too fast. Even the mobile home I used to have, we didn't have anything that would put out a flame other than a cigarette lighter or a candle inside. Always careful with the candles because them things, they burn fast several mobile homes in that mobile home park went up in the years I was there. My uh, former neighbor, Bill, lost his first mobile home in that park due to a uh, fire incident, and it burned down in like three or four minutes and was completely uninhabitable. No, Ron, I've got AT&T, and my internet is just terrible. Uh, I'm actually finding it easier to live stream on my phone as long as I'm not 
in the house. As soon as I go in the house, I lose three bars and can barely live stream. I tried that the other night and it wouldn't even load. I get four bars in the backyard so I can live stream from the backyard. And I get all bars down by the river. Go figure. My favorite fishing hole is probably the best place I can go to live stream. So I'll be doing more of those. It's really just me kind of hanging out by the side of the river with a couple of fishing poles. But, you know, to me hanging out by the side of the fishing, uh, by the river. You know, that's something I like to do. I mean, it's not really permaculture, but... And it does give me sources for fertilizer. Most of this is fertilized from the ocean. I bring home leftover bait, you know, leftovers from cleaning the fish, and then of course, lots of coffee. Which my coffee went stone cold on me. It's cold out here tonight. I don't know what the present temperature is. But since I've been out here, it's probably dropped 10 degrees. And it was 45 when I was out or inside before I came out here. So I'd say it's probably about... 35, 36 now. People care. That's one way of looking at it. I look at it as probably one of the most relaxing activities I do is go sit by the river with the fishing pole. If I catch something, great. If I don't, I got a few hours to just hang out down by the river. And the spot I, I like to go to, it's really pretty. It's not necessarily the best fishing spot, but it's just really pretty, really relaxing. It's fairly easy for me to get to. I can back my truck right into that spot. I can have myself completely set up in 10 minutes with my truck backed right into it. And the views are spectacular. It's a big flat area. Got a couple nice islands right out in front of me that I can look at. Hey, thanks for coming in, Carpy Chris. I really appreciate it. Much appreciated. If you don't recognize anybody, go by and check out their uh, channels. That's a really nice fishing spot, though. And it's kind of one of them spots that's hit or miss, though. Sometimes the fish are in there, and sometimes they're not. I've had some nights where... I don't catch anything. I have other nights where I catch something for maybe 10, 15 minutes as the fish come through. I've had other nights that sit there for hours. No fish. Not even a bite. But it's okay. Because it's nice. And it's relaxing. You just kind of hang out there and enjoy nature. Watch the birds go by. Watch the boats go by. The only downside to it is if the winds are coming from the wrong direction. Hi, Misha. How you doing? Good to see you. Come on in. Misha, that's Ron at Pacific Permaculture. Carpy Chris just left. I don't know if you all already know each other or not. Yeah, that, that spot, if the winds are wrong, you can't fish it. 
So you're always looking to make sure the winds are are relatively low or coming from the west. And just if it's coming from the east, there's no fish in that spot. You throw your line out and it just drifts right back into you. The waves will push you over. Yeah, it's a really nice spot, Ron. Uh, I used to go out to the islands out there on my canoe all the time. I haven't done that in eight, nine years. I need a bigger boat. It's became too difficult to do it with just the canoe, and I usually have several people with me, and it doesn't really work. I can't take a bunch of kids, my kids, out to an island, dump them off, and go back and get other people. And it just, I can't leave kids on shore by themselves, so it doesn't really work for me. Plus, porting out two, three tents, firewood, fishing gear, food, drink, doesn't really work in a canoe. Three canoes. You can do it with three canoes. You need a John boat. Yeah, it's getting cold out here. Oh, that's all right, Misha. Thanks for coming in. I greatly appreciate it. It's the first time I figured out how I could actually see the chat while on the phone. Last time I tried it, it didn't work. Not really sure why. It popped up right at the beginning, and then it just went away. I could see people in. And when I did the playback, there was obviously people talking, but I couldn't see them while I was out there fishing. Some kind of animal just came into my yard. Probably a raccoon. They come through my yard a lot. Ooh, chili. This house has had a long history of raccoon problems. Well, before I was here, I've talked to some of the neighbors that have been here since this neighborhood was built. And for some reason, this house and another house a little further down the block have always had raccoon problems. Right now, there's a whole lot of new buildings and new houses going up in this neighborhood. And it seems like they might be pushing all the raccoons my direction. I gotta watch carefully when I have the kids out because the raccoons aren't scared of the kids at all. They'll run from me. They won't run from the kids. I'm 
I'm going to go grab me a cup of coffee real quick. I will be right back. It's too cold to not have a cup of coffee. If it wasn't for the fire, there's no way I'd be out here. Present temperature is 33 degrees and falling. So, being that it's only 11 o'clock at night, we're definitely going below freezing here tonight. Unless by some miracle chance it suddenly stabilizes. I don't know. That's pretty cold for here. Oh. Hey, look at that. I got a bot.
I think that's one of my first uh, Russian bots. The links they drop, they uh, go to adult pages. And I don't want any of that on my stuff. But it counts as a view. So, whatever. And just remove it. Yeah, tonight would have been a good night to go fishing. I didn't want to try it tonight because the winds have been high and the river would be all turned up. And then right before sunset, the wind just stopped. That put me into fire mode to make sure I have a fire going out here. I want to get me three or four nice old school steel drums to run fires in. Once these are uh, a little more established gardens. Yeah, that's the thing now, Ron, is these Russian bots. They come in, they usually have a Russian name. Sometimes they'll have uh, like a Lithuanian version or whatnot. And it, it's just. It's an automatic bot that looks for live streams, goes in and drops illicit links. I've seen a lot of them over the last, like, month or so. You used to, you'd get one or two here or there. They'd even leave messages on your, uh, just... On a video but now they they come into the live streams and they drop them and when you click on it you got to be careful that it doesn't take you to it so it can be difficult for the mods to get rid of them because sometimes when you click on it instead of getting your moderator stuff that comes up it just goes to a web page and uh, it's all listed stuff. A friend of mine was telling me that uh, if you stay on them for too long, that they or try to watch any of the videos, they download uh, malware on your system. Not entirely sure how true that is, but he knows computers a lot better than I do, so it wouldn't surprise me. And this would have been a good fire to forge on. I'm going to make an adjustment to it. Those pieces of oak are only like a month, month and a half old. They're burning pretty good though. I guess tomorrow I'll pull the fishing gear out of my truck and go see if I can't find a little more wood to run a fire tomorrow night. Maybe I'll get it going earlier and let the kids hang out by it for a little bit before they got to go to bed. They're going to have a cold morning going to school. On the plus side, my uh, stone fruit are getting their chill hours.
Although I have a couple stone fruit that never bloom. They're supposed to be low chill. 150, 200 hours. And they just never do anything. They're probably going to end up being replaced with something else. I've got this one apricot that we got out of a uh, magazine. You know, one of those order your bulbs and seeds magazines. And uh, they told me, it said low chill in the thing, but I called them because it didn't say how many hours the low chill was. And so I called them. They told me it was between 100 and 200. They didn't know exactly. Well, 150 is a good marker for here. 150 chill hours is really, really good. That's what my uh, Florida Prince peach is, and that produces for me every year. So I went ahead and I ordered it. It was $13. It's not terribly expensive. And it's grown really well every year. It goes dormant October, November well ahead of any of the others that thing never blooms it's like seven years old now I ain't got a single flower off of it now I was talking to a couple of my friends online that used to actually work for that particular company and the company's up in Michigan and he told me that that particular apricot is grown from seed. That it's not grafted. It's not technically a named variety. Even though they call it Manchurian. They literally just get seeds from low-chill apricots and start them from seed. So I have absolutely no idea... If that thing will ever set fruit on it, ever. Which is kind of disappointing. If I would have known that, I wouldn't have ordered it. And I would have got a variety that is approved for here called Katie. And Katie Epricot is for here. Maybe this year I'll actually get something out of it. I don't know. Yeah, they sent a seedling, but it was supposed to be an air layered growing on its own rootstock. So that that should have been a tip off. That really should have. It's a decent size, though. I mean, it was maybe 15 inches when they sent it to me, and you know, it's five, six foot tall and probably six foot across. Wants to be a bush, not a tree, which is kind of weird. <coughs> Yeah, I've been thinking about that. I did try to graft uh, a plum onto it. But I only had two scions and neither one of them took. 
And I've got another plum that I have grown over here that is from Algeria. And it's it's purely experimental. I wasn't sure if it would work here or not. Uh, it probably worked really good for you. You're much drier than I am. But it's still alive. I mean, it's been in the ground five years, and I don't know if it'll ever produce any, but... <clears throat> I do have a red plum, uh, something beauty, red beauty, scarlet beauty, that uh, is approved for this area at 150 chill hours, and it already bloomed. It bloomed two weeks ago. So, now, eventually that should take. Now, my uh, Florida Prince, it bloomed four times, five times a year until it got bigger. Every time it got real too, really too hot and then cooled down or too cold and then warmed up or anything like that, it bloomed. And uh, this Scarlet Beauty seems to be exhibiting the same type of behavior. So, in theory, I should have plums in two to three years off of that one. It's going to end up getting a lot more light than it gets now because the lot next door to me sold... And they're planning on bulldozing it and building a house there eventually. I've already had contact with the uh, guy that bought the property. He's been to my house three times. Um, his surveyors have been to my house. Uh, his engineer has come by my house. And... They all want to come in my backyard and examine where my stuff is so that they can plan their place. And I won't, I won't let them in the backyard. I've been in construction most of my adult life and I find it extremely abnormal that they keep asking to come in my backyard so that they can examine where my septic system is because... Supposedly, the city and the county don't have record of it, which I know isn't true. And uh, the actual guy that's running the construction company asked if they could use our water, which I probably wouldn't have had a problem with until I started asking a couple questions and... Um, turns out that he wants to use my water to pour the slab and do the block and anything else that needs to be done and now nah, that's not happening you know, it takes a lot of water to pour to make up the mud to pour a slab and that's actually kind of abnormal for the construction crews around here when it comes to pouring a slab normally trucks line up not somebody's out there mixing it small batch doesn't work that way when you're pour, pouring a slab you need all that concrete there when it's time for it to be there not sitting there mixing a small batch so that was kind of weird kind of weird and a bit on the shady side give me a minute guys i gotta find some more stuff to put in that fire it's starting to wear down.
and it's too chilly to let that wear down. Way too chilly. Yeah, 29 degrees now. I think that's pretty chilly. Get out, you know. Away from the fire and it gets real cold real fast phone is at 9%. It's probably going to go down real soon then. So, thank you everybody who came in. I greatly appreciate it. I'm going to hang out until my phone dies. And I'll probably hang out next to the fire for another hour or so. I can't believe how cold it is. There's definitely frost on stuff out along the edges in my yard already. I think I'm gonna go out front and check on everything up there. I might have to bring things in that I didn't plan on bringing. It wasn't supposed to get this this cold this fast we're saying 28 by morning it ain't even midnight yet and it's 29 so that's from my own personal thermometer that's here.
And the wind is dead still. There's no air movement at all. I've done a few foundations just by doing small mix, but generally speaking, when you're in the city here, they don't do that. And he's not a small builder. He's he's this big time builder from down in South Florida. So uh, maybe he doesn't know the right people up here. I don't know. But he kind of started off bad by telling me about where my property lines were when I already knew where my property lines were. And he was basically claiming an extra eight feet, which would take out six fruit trees. So that, that was no good. I've got everything marked off now. Generally speaking, you just kind of order a truck when you're doing stuff like that. So I found that that kind of odd. And he was pushy. And I don't like that. I don't think he was really prepared to meet me or the neighbor on the other side of the lot. Because I've been, I've been doing construction since I was in my late teens of various different types and the neighbor that is on the other side of the lot he's an actual builder he buys up lots and builds anywhere between three and five houses a year and sells them off he also has an air conditioning business so this guy came in acting like he was a big shot and that didn't really go over well there's a lot of building activity going on here right now that the locals aren't even involved in which is a pattern I saw in 2006 right before the big crash where we had an influx of builders from other parts of the state coming in and building as fast as they could in hopes of unloading before everything crashed. And right now, the only thing that's keeping it from crashing here in Florida is the massive influx of people coming in from the Northeast, escaping New York, New Jersey, and all the craziness that's been going on up there. For some reason, they think Florida's a good place to go. Not really sure their uh, train of thought on this being a good place to go, but we're in receiving in my general area approximately 1,200 new people per day moving into the area. And that is a rate that is completely unacceptable. Oh, there go 